How's it going everybody? My name's Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. Last week, Brooke and I built an outhouse on our off-grid property in the remote backcountry of Northern Michigan. This week, we're gonna put in a well. Stay tuned. Here's some of the things you're gonna need to do your own well. First off, you're gonna need pipe. Now this is pipe that's inch and a quarter. This pipe is rated to be used as drive pipe to actually be driven into the ground in making shallow wells. Now you're also gonna need joint compound. This is basically a sealant that is gonna seal the threads of your pipe to a pipe coupler. You're also gonna need a sand point. This has a hard point on one end and a filter screen that lets the water seep into your well. We're gonna start out by digging a hole as deep as we can with a set of post hole diggers. Over the years I've done a lot of plumbing, but no wells. This is an absolute first for Brooke and I. So to supervise Brooke and I and to walk us through this process is our friend Scott. Hoping we'll get about four and a half to five feet deep. We'll get it as deep as we can with a post hole digger and then start driving. Right on. Now the way Scott's explained it to us is that the deeper you get with the hole, the easier it's going to be to get the well started. Not only is it going to help ensure that the well goes in straight up and down, but you also have a three foot point on the end of your well and you have a five foot stick of pipe. So that's eight feet. Without this really deep hole in the ground to start your well, you would have to be eight foot above the ground to start driving a well, which would be pretty much impossible. So Brooke and I and Scott are taking turns with the post hole diggers, getting down as deep as we can. Hopefully we won't hit any tree roots. So far so good. We have a bucket of water. I'm just gonna drop this thing in here and let it soak. Just let it soak the leathers up so they'll swell and then they'll both work a lot better and it just saves a little time later on holding water in there by hand trying to let them soak and swell out. Awesome. Now that our hole's dug, we can hook our sand point to our first section of pipe and start driving. And we'll connect the two together, the sand point to the first section of pipe with a heavy duty drive coupler. Now when it comes to pipe dope, this is the really important part. You want to take your pipe dope and work it right into the threads. Not haphazard, get it right down into the bottom of the threads. And make sure it's, it's completely coated all the way around the pipe, everywhere that there's a thread. Now that we've got our first stick of pipe, and we've got our pipe coupler threaded on, we can thread it onto the sand point. Once we've doped up the sand point, the thread's good. And at that point, we yeah. tighten the two together as much as we can. Sure is a blessing to have an experienced well guy around here that's done it before. Scott's keeping us on straight and narrow so we don't make any major mistakes. The drive pipe and drive couplings are tough and they can take it, so make sure they're as tight as you can get them. And stuff it all in the hole. Now the drive coupling that I'm putting on right now is going to be the one that takes all the abuse and it's going to get beat on with Scott's homemade well driver which I'm guessing weighs probably 75-80 pounds. Here you can see us putting in that big homemade well driver. Now you want to make sure that that coupler at the top is good and tight. You're going to be using it over and over and over and it's going to take all the abuse of that big heavy well driver. And once we start driving that well, Scott is going to check it for plumb. You can do quite a bit to keep that well plumb when you first get started. Once you get it down there a ways, you can't do so much, and once it's down there a long ways, you can't do anything at all. So it's best to get it as straight as you possibly can when you first get started. Is it lunchtime yet? <laughs> We're very lucky in the fact that the, the ground here is, is all sand. And as you can see, if you watch, while Brooke is driving this well, it's dropping down with every hit. Every stroke of that well driver is bringing that well pipe closer down to the ground. Could be a lot harder to do. We're pretty happy with the, the way this is driving. Once we pull that driver, we'll take off that, that sacrificial coupler that is beat silly with the driver. Then we'll dope up the threads on the existing pipe that's in the ground 
put a fresh drive coupler on it, put a fresh section of pipe on, and start the process over. This is about as deep as you want to go because you need that space to work. So you can put the new coupling on and get it good and tight and get a crescent wrench on the pipe below it. And at that point, we'll load up a, another five foot stick on top, get everything as Turn tight as we possibly over. can, starting the coupling over. and then start that five foot driving process again to get that next section of pipe below the ground level. Now some plumbing fittings can't take a ton of torque and they'll break, but that's not the case with well pipe and drive couplings. Get them as tight as you possibly can. Also make sure when you're doping those pipe ends that all that dope is worked into the threads so it's right down into the very bottom of the groove of the threads themselves and covering all the area. And it goes without saying you want to use a joint compound that's non-toxic and is rated for water. Now we slide the driver into a fresh section of pipe, stand it up, load it into the new coupler, all doped up, ready to go, and we get it tight. You can see Scott is bracing against the lower crescent wrench with his foot to lock it into position. And up there at the top, we're using that original drive coupler that's going to get ruined during the process of driving. Now we're all set up to drive another section of pipe. Brick brought over a stump to stand on, and it's a little precarious getting started, but the driving is going really easy. You can see each time that that weight is thrown down, it drops that pipe a pretty good distance. It's kind of a hit and miss thing driving a well anywhere, I suppose, but right here in this area, you can see that it's really dropping fast in this soft sand. But as you'll notice here in a second where Brooke is driving, uh, she hits a section of hard pan, and there were probably two or three or maybe even four sections of extremely hard pan sand. And when we hit those areas, it, it seemed to take, I don't know, it seemed to go from about an inch of drive to maybe next to nothing, an eighth or a quarter of an inch. It took a little bit to punch through. But once we got punched through that hard pan, uh, driving started to get easier again. Please. Ooh, this is exciting. No, I have a feeling it's, we're not quite there. I don't know why. Oh. That's where we were. We should be five feet deeper than that. Oh. Yeah! There it is. You just found water. Right there. Just hit faster and harder. Now that's a fantastic feeling to know that you've struck water. You know it's down there. Now you just got to settle the well in to the height that you want it. Ideally what you want, if you have a three foot sand point, you want to be a foot above the sand point where the water level starts. That way if the water drops about a foot or so, uh, your sand point is still underneath the water you don't start sucking in air. Scott's doing the math here to figure out how deep the point has to be to make sure it's completely submerged under at least a foot of water down in the aquifer. If you can drive the very top of your screen point to at least a foot below the water level and yet have enough pipe sticking out above the ground that the well pump itself sits at a comfortable level, you've pretty much hit it right on the head. That's what we're doing right now, is trying to figure out how big of a pipe we need for that last section. And it looks like a five footer is gonna do just about perfect. Going anywhere? Are you hitting it yet? I thought you were just warming up. <laughs> oh, I'm plenty warm, thank you. Luckily, we didn't run into any more hard pan and the driving went pretty fast. Brooks just wrapping up here on the last few strokes and it looks like we're right about down to that perfect height to set the well pump on. We'll 
take out that big homemade driver and we'll double check the distance down to the water itself and also to the bottom of the sand point. Looks good. Pretty close to 19 right there. Right there's your water. So we'll go one foot, two foot, three foot. Now your point is completely in the water. Four foot, a couple inches. You're good. You've got about 14 or 15 inches of water above the top of your screen point. Now it's time to dope up that last section of pipe and put our well on. The well pump should be ready to use. It's been sitting in that bucket of water for a couple hours and the leather should be good and soaked. Now we'll spin that pump on the top pipe, get it as tight as we can get it by hand, and prime it up. We should have water. That's probably... I don't have any. Okay. Oh, it all no, 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 there it is. There's your water. Oh, oh my God. It is truly an amazing thing to have your own water source. We'd like to say a special thanks to our friend Scott for coming along and guiding us through the process. He's done it lots of times and it was great to have somebody along with experience to help us uh, avoid the pitfalls. It's clearing up. Awesome.